and good morning. This is part five of the doctrine of imputation as our study of this is continuing for these short five minutes. We're coming from Romans chapter five starting in verse number 12 going all the way through the end of the chapter verse 21 and imputation is that taking of our of Adam's sin placing it upon mankind and then mankind except uh, having the righteousness of Christ placed upon them and our curse placed upon Christ. It's basically what imputation is in a most basic sense. But there was a question uh, that comes up in some people's minds. There's, there are very important differences in the two cases of Adam and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there's not perfect parallelism. It can't be. The effects of the work of Christ were far more than to simply counteract the evil that was produced by the sin of Adam. The differences between the effect of his act and the work of Christ are really summed up this way. The sin of Adam led to the condemnation of the entire human race as Adam was the federal head of all of humanity. He was the head. He was over all of humanity. The work of Christ had a tendency toward the opposite effect. Verse 15 tells us that. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God, and by the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. So the gift abounded unto many. The condemnation which came from the sin of Adam was a result of one single offense. The moment that he committed treason against God, um, that through that one single sinful act, it thrust all mankind into it. However, the work of Christ doesn't take care of a single offense. It takes care of many offenses. How many of us have sinned only one time in our entire life? No, we sin multiple times. We sin over and over. Number one, we're born in sin, uh, and then we begin to sin by practice, and we sin and sin and sin. Look at verse 15. It explains it. It says, not and not as it was uh, by one that sinned, so is the gift. For judgment was by one under condemnation. So there was only just one sin and that brought everybody into condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses under justification. So Adam's single sin thrust man into sinfulness and now man is abounding in sin and even more as we saw once the law was introduced. Once we had the law we now started seeing all of the sinfulness of our actions and we see so many sins in our life. So a single Adam thrusts a single Adam with a single sin thrust man into sinfulness. But yet Jesus Christ, his justification is for many offenses. You and I are sinners by thought, by deed, by everything imaginable. We are sinners. So the work of Christ is is great. It is immense in the redemption of mankind. The work of Christ, is, as one writer said, is far more abundant and overflowing in its influence as it extended deeper and further. It was more than a compensation for the evils of the fall. Much more. Verse 17 says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, so one man's offense, one man offended in one way, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So when you have someone that you're dealing with that tells you what great sinners they are and how there's no way that God could save them, that they're too bad for God to save them, remind them that Adam thrust all of humanity into condemnation by a single trespass. But yet, God's grace is so great that it covers many offenses. Our sins are forgiven past, present, and future through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What great hope we have through this beautiful doctrine of imputation. Yes, it starts off with some bad news, Adam, but it ends with the greatest news. Jesus Christ the righteous. So by the obedience of one, many shall be made righteous.